Hey, this is Terry, and in this video I want to discuss the SP25 Prisma Home Cinema Processor and the SPA25 Prisma Home Cinema Integrated Amplifier. Now, as you might be able to guess from the similarity in their names, they are quite similar in their features and functionality, with the main distinguishing probably obvious difference being the integrated amplifiers inside the integrated amp. And both of them, as a result, have the same basic design goal, and that is to provide the best possible movie and music listening experience. We don't distinguish between, say, the world of the audiophile and the world of the cinephile. We believe that one of the virtues of a home cinema is its ability to play back anything and everything, hopefully, to the most satisfying level. And as a result, we've designed some interesting things into this, or focused the design in such a way, as to hopefully do provide that best possible experience. Each of them possess 11 channels of immersive audio processing. That includes Dolby Atmos, as well as DTSX, as well as derived surround sound channels for alternative stereo two-channel sources. We also have, then, eARC connection as part of the two HDMI outputs. And what this allows you to do is easily, with a single HDMI cable, connect either the processor or the integrated amplifier to your video display for the highest level of video performance, as well as then to have an audio return channel from any of those sources that you may be playing from your display. So if you're streaming Netflix from your TV display, you'll get the best video quality as well as audio quality by way of that single cable bringing the audio to the processor or the integrated amplifier. Now, in addition to these two HDMI outputs, we also have four HDMI inputs. Now, a word needs to be mentioned about the resolution capabilities of these units. When we began their design, we felt that the HDMI 2.1 build list really offered us only one key feature for the best possible home cinema enjoyment and that was this eARC audio return channel. The rest of the HDMI 2.1 build list seemed to be focused almost exclusively and entirely on high resolution, high frame rate gaming. And we recognize, particularly given the fact that Melmo is a huge game design center, that the maturity level of video games at these higher resolutions, at these higher frame rates, really wasn't quite there yet. There aren't that many on offer let alone there aren't many consoles that are able to play them and play them effectively and consistently, let alone many people may not have the display capable of being able to provide that level of performance. So as a result, and due to the semiconductor shortage that is plaguing us after the pandemic, as a result of the pandemic, we determined that we'd focus on 4K60 as the sweet spot for resolution for video production. There are a number of different reasons for this. Uh, one is that most serious gamers will downgrade their even high resolution games to 4K 60 or even 4K 30 to ensure that they have consistent gameplay, that the, both the console, the display, the processor all can keep up. And for those who want the best, want that higher resolution, high frame rate performance, those game consoles should be attached directly to the display. We do have the capability to have HDR10, HDR10+, as well as Dolby Vision as part of the video switching platform here with our HDMI inputs and outputs. So we really believe we've covered all the bases to provide you with the best video viewing. Now when it comes to audio, with the processing capabilities that we have, we have a number of different ways in which to deliver those signals. We can configure a variety of systems with these units, all the way from 5.1, 7.1 to 5.1.2, 7.1.2, even 7.1.4, with or without the addition of a stereo amplifier in the case of the SPA25 Prisma, which has nine channels of amplification. Nine channels of amplification with 90 watts per channel and 8 ohms all channels driven, 145 watts in stereo mode due to the adaptive power supply that we use in this unit, as well as then with a little bit of a trick that we have done, if you're using a 5.1 system or a 5.1.2 or even a 7.1 system, you're able to configure the amplifiers in this to provide a bi-amplified output from the speaker binding posts. And what this means then is that you have 290 channels into a speaker as long as it can be bi-wired to accommodate the bi-amplification that that configuration allows. 
Similarly, we have dual left and right front channel analog outputs to be able to more easily by amplify what often is your much larger and more capable left and right speakers. And so this allows you to connect, say, a pair of A35.2 stereo amplifiers or one of our A35.8 8-channel amps. Now that 8-channel amp allows you to bridge all four pairs of those outputs. That gives you then a total of 1,500 watts of power delivered in a bi-amp configuration to bi-wireable speakers. Additionally, the integrated amp features a center channel output that otherwise might not be part of this kind of configuration. And the reason for that is that in most installations, our center channel will be somewhat limited, particularly in bass performance, because we have to make it more compact to fit underneath our displays and in some cases into cabinets. And therefore, we thought it might be a nice idea to have, in this case, a center channel output dedicated for connection to a subwoofer, a powered subwoofer. And this would allow you to then dial in this sub dedicated to your center channel so that it provided a greater coherent or consistent timbral and tonal balance between your left and right speakers. So your left, center, and right would be sounding closer to each other than they otherwise might. Now, as far as inputs go, we also have multiple inputs, five pairs of RCA analog inputs, and four of those pairs can be configured to a single input to accommodate a 7.1 analog source. Now, this might be a multi-channel SACD player that you have, like the BD32 or BD32 Mark II we had in our lineup for many years. And this allows you then to use the processing within those disc players that you might prefer, although it's highly unlikely, to what is found here in these two units, so that you then can connect those as a single input and be able to then easily select them. When it comes to other sources, we have the Prisma network player built into each of these units. This is our bundle of technologies that includes AirPlay, Bluetooth, uh, Chromecast, Spotify Connect, as well as by future update Room Ready, so that you can really explore all that's being offered now through streaming media. It also allows you to, with the Prisma application, to control a NAS that might be connected to the network so that you can play back your music. And I'll emphasize it's music. It'll be a two-channel network player, but of course, with the derived multi-channel processing, both of these units, you can take that two-channel input and turn it into a surround sound experience. The Prisma app, in this case, does allow you to set up the network player functionality as well as control the NAS. But to set up the units themselves, you will use the new Prisma remote control. Now this remote control is a universal primer product remote. It will control not only the most current Prisma models, including the processor and integrated amp, but all of our other current generation of products, as well as virtually every past product primer has ever produced. With the exception of the first product, the 928 and the 200 series, all other primer products can be controlled by this remote with a simple configuration step. Additionally, you can also control most functions of most TV displays. And so once you have this configured, you're able to have a single system remote control. Now that doesn't mean that you might not have to have your other remotes standing by for more sophisticated functionality and control. But in general, once you've set up the SP25 Prisma or the SPA25 Prisma using the on-screen display and this remote control, you should be able to, for most cases, control the system as you're listening with this single remote. When it comes to being able to set up the systems, there are a number of presets available to you. In fact, there are 16 presets available to you with each of these units so that you can set up each input to meet the specific needs you might have. Additionally, there are five audio presets that you're able to have at your fingertips to select giving different conditions in which you might want to listen. And so with all of this functionality, you're able to configure these units in a way that allows for the easiest access to the greatest home cinema experience we can currently provide. And with that, given their complexity, you might want to learn more. So you can go to their product pages on primary.net. If you have questions about either of these units or any primary product, you can complete a help request form in our help center. 
And we will do our best to answer those questions as soon as we possibly can. Thanks.